everyone. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman. I am the host and content executive here at Higher Things. And joining me again today is the wonderful Michelle Bauman. She is the director of Why for Life. It's great to have you back, friend. How are you? It is great to be here. I'm excited that you invited me back. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I reached out to Michelle because we got um, a, a question about sort of um, end of life uh, value. And I don't know anybody better to sort of talk about it. So Michelle, we, we, we talk about a lot about life issues in the early parts. Uh, we talk about, you know, pregnancy and uh, abortion. We talk about why your life matters, uh, even life issues throughout the rest of your life too. But when we get older, when we, when we hurt all the time, when we can't contribute to society, um, there's, there's sort of a, a push to sort of rob life of its, of its value here to say, if I'm going to hurt every day and I know where I'm going and I can't help anybody here and I'm a burden, why shouldn't I just go be with Jesus? What do we say to Yeah, that? great question because uh, there's an easy answer. <laughs> so your life, whether you are experiencing hardship or whether you are, whether you are aging, whether you are incapable of doing some things that you used to be able to do is no less valuable than it was the moment you were formed because your value resides in what God has done in your life. Your value is based on the fact that you are created by God, handmade, woven in the womb as Psalm 139, 13 through 16 affirms. Um, but not only that God made you, but that God also redeemed you in his son, Christ. And so that too gives your life incredible value, valuable value that um, is not dependent on our abilities, on our looks, on our intellect, on, on uh, our experiences. But it is inherent in the fact that we, we are God's children, whether, whether people know it or not, right? Their lives are valuable. But even more so for the Christian um, we know that that God has called the Christian to faith and the Holy Spirit now lives in that individual, which also gives that individual um, not only life, but value. And we know that those that have not become Christian yet, the Holy Spirit is at work to bring them to faith. And so those lives also are, inval are invaluable. Those lives uh, God wants to be with in, to be with for eternity in heaven. So, so when we look at old age and we look at the fact that we can't do things maybe that we once did, um, we can speak to that out of compassion. We can recognize that that, that, that individual needs to be affirmed in their human identity. Uh, that individual needs to be affirmed in their dignity um, because every human has dignity because he has been made by God or she has been made by God. Um, but we also don't found um, the meaning of life the value of life and any of those things. Right. I, I, and that's how it works the rest of the world too, if you think about it. Like, I, I mean, so uh, the, the diamond on, on your wedding ring probably cost a lot, but what does it do? It, nothing's ever given value based on only what it can do. It's, it's based on what somebody's willing to pay for it. And so when you, right. you talk about us being redeemed by the son, Jesus Christ, this is, this is where your value starts to, to be measured in something more than your works, what you used to be able to do and, and what you might not be able to do anymore. You were, you were redeemed. You were bought with the blood of Christ. It, it costs one death of God to, to purchase you. You're, you're precious. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, you know, when we think about our vocations as well, there's, you know, another aspect to, to look at. God has placed us in relationships and in vocations uh, in order to serve, but also to be served. And I think that's really hard for us to recognize, um, even though it is reality for our whole life, right? God serves us. Uh, God, God provides for us. Our dignity and worth are founded in him. Um, but it is always hard for the individual to say, please serve me, right? We want to be self-sufficient. We want to be like Adam and Eve wanted to be gods unto ourselves. We want, we want to you know, control our lives and make decisions about our lives. And sometimes our vocation is really to be served um, and, and to allow um, God to do his work in others and to allow him to do his work in our life, that we might be a testament to the, to the, the victory we have in Christ, right? Um, when we are weak, uh, God's, God's grace and mercy um, shines through and, and is a confession of faith as well. And, and that's a hard confession to make. 
right? I mean, if any of us have experienced broken, you know, bones and we needed other people's help, just even asking for help can be difficult. And so that gives us not only insight into maybe um, what people are feeling as they age, but also what we can do as people who who um, have been placed in vocations to care for the elderly or to care for those who are, are sick or who are suffering um, to, to, again, to uphold their human dignity and, and to affirm that this is the role they get to play, right? They get to, to play the role of being served and, and, uh, and to receive the gifts that God has given them through community, through word and sacrament. Um, these, are, these are good gifts too even right. though sometimes they're hard to receive. They're, they're the harder confession to make, but they're also the more powerful witness. Uh, we, we always sort of wrap up Christian identity in serving other people, but this isn't what Jesus sort of gives us. He, he talks about, let the little children, the helpless ones come unto me, that the son of man did not come to, to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, that Christianity is about receiving from Jesus when we can do nothing on our own. Um, and, and so in a lot of ways, you, you start to wonder, like, why am I still here if I know where I'm going and I can't help anybody? But what if, what if the witness that you're, you're, you're providing to your neighbor just in living your life, just in being a, a demonstration of the Christian faith, uh, of, of what it is to, to hope without necessarily being able to do, that, that changes lives. It absolutely does. That, that confession, that, that living that life, and, and two, what is to prevent you from praying? right? <laughs> we, we know that the prayers are ascending to God and God answers prayers, right? Um, and so even in those, those moments when we can't get up and do anything, we can still pray. Um, and, and, we, and God is still at work uh, in our lives to, to make a confession to the world. So there is much hope there, um, you know, just as beginning of life where we are cared for, we need to be cared for at the end. Um, and it is merciful caring, right? It is merciful to change the, the diaper of a baby. It is also merciful to change the diaper of an elderly person. So these are opportunities to show mercy and to receive mercy and to reflect that giving nature that, that, uh, that God has, that life-affirming gift um, uh, of service. So, yeah. That's fantastic. So maybe just one question to kind of wrap up. Say, say you're a kid and your grandma or your your great grandpa or, or maybe even your mom and your dad, they're they're starting to to struggle with these these pains of of old age and come to to just find themselves in a depression that they don't want to go on living. What what can we say? Well, first of all, we can affirm them and and remind them that they are important in our lives, that they are a gift that has been given to us, right? As the body of Christ, the, the individuals God brings into our lives, they are all intended as gifts and opportunities for service. And to remind them that we, we have been sent to serve them as well. But also if they're having those thoughts, <clears throat> I would definitely connect them with their pastor and with, uh, with a good counselor, a good Christian counselor that can remind them of whose they are um, remind them of the value that is inherent in them, not because of what they can do, but because of what God has done. So yeah, young people have a, a wonderful opportunity to affirm the lives of the, the elderly, um, those that are suffering, to remind them that, that, hey, as a young person, and I'm not really anymore, but I'm watching you, right? You are, you are a testament to me of God's, God's goodness. So yeah. There's lots of things that, that we can do and certainly getting medical help and professional help. Those are, those are good and godly as well. Fantastic. Michelle Bauman is the director of Why for Life. Michelle, thanks so much for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Have a great day. You too.